Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. Understanding the Medicaid process is crucial to a successful estate plan. If you need a nursing home stay and aren't prepared, the expense can be devastating to your savings. Call right now, 866-848-5699, and get your free copy of Cushing & Dolan's new guide, Last Minute Medicaid Eligibility. That's 866-848-5699, or request it online right now at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for, and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing & Dolan. Cushing & Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing & Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The Financial Exchange is produced by Money Matters Radio and is hosted by employees of the Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor that provides investment advisory services. All opinions expressed are solely those of the hosts, do not reflect the opinions of Armstrong Advisory or anyone else, and do not guarantee profit. Investments can lose money. This program does not offer any specific financial or investment advice. Please consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong and Money Matters Radio do not compensate each other for referrals and are not affiliated. This is the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zotta and Mike Armstrong. Your exclusive look at business and financial news affecting your day, your city, your world. Stay informed and up to date about economic and market trends. Plus, breaking business news every day. The Financial Exchange is a proud partner of the Disabled American Veterans Department of Massachusetts. Help us support our great American heroes by taking part in this year's DAV 5K. For more information, visit DAV5K.Boston. The DAV 5K Boston is proudly presented by Veterans Development Corporation. This is the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zotta and Mike Armstrong. Mike, did you... uh... Did you happen to make it through the, the great market crash of July 20th, 2023? Oh, they went down once? They, they For, did. Well, and, and not I'll, all of them, though. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. And and all I heard yesterday afternoon was, oh, it's 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 just brutal out there. Like, what a terrible day in markets. And I looked, the, the S&P wasn't even down 1%. The Dow was up, wasn't it? The Dow was up. <laughs> like, yes, Tesla and Netflix were no, down. No, the NASDAQ goes down? What? I mean, the, the NASDAQ is still up more than 35% year to date. <laughs> uh, like, we've, we've just we gotten, gotten soft. soft, man. Uh, it was you know a little more than three years ago where the S&P 500 lost 30% in three weeks. Trade and, halts. And, and, and now you have circuit breakers. A day where the NASDAQ loses a little bit less than 2%. And our pets, oh, our no. Pets heads like, are what's going off. on? It's just, oh, I. I we we, we got to toughen up a little bit mm. on some of this stuff because markets don't always go up. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about how Americans feel about something else, specifically the economy. There's a piece in the Wall Street Journal today. It's titled, Americans Feel Better About the Economy, Should We Believe Them? Yes. They're not lying. (laughs) You can ask the question as to whether or not they're right. First of all, (laughs) yes. So first of all, as as you'll learn in life, you can generally feel anything that you want. It doesn't mean (laughs) that you're right or wrong about it, but Uh. if Mike tells me that he feels sad that his computer is gray... Okay, that's that's fine. I might not really think that that's worthwhile, but can you imagine that's you lying to someone about a stranger thing than how you feel about the economy? Do you f- how do you feel about the economy? Bad, but I really think it's good. I w- <laughs> why why would you do that? If if you say you feel good or bad about the economy, that's what you think. Okay, poorly written uh, headline to the article, but let's talk about what they're actually talking about, which is, is a number of economy, consumer sentiment surveys. Yes, consumer sentiment has improved over the last 18 months. Yeah. Should we buy that? And once again, I say the answer is yes. Yes. And here's why. 18 months ago, we're really, let's, let's talk about the first half of last year. The economy was awful. It wasn't awful in the conventional sense, which is high unemployment, 
a lot of people out of work, sure. no demand for products, you know, it wasn't that. Rather, it was awful because there was so much demand for stuff that prices went up way more than wages, way more than pensions, way more than Social Security, basically way more than any form of income. Right. And as such, people had to cut back on what they were buying and their standard of living went down. Right. That is a bad economy. It's a different bad economy from 2009, which is 9% of us are unemployed, no one wants to buy my stuff, so I'm having to liquidate it at, you know, fire sale prices. I'm laying off my sales department because there are no sales. Right. Different kind of bad from that, but still bad. Yeah, and we talked about that. Like, you know, I personally looked at the economy that we had last year and said, I'll, I'll take that trade off. We, we commonly refer to something called the misery index, which is uh, adding the unemployment rate plus the rate of inflation, and that's your misery index. And we were at really high levels last year. Because inflation was historically high. I mean, you were talking about, what, a misery index of probably 13 or 14 last year. 12.6 was the peak. 12.6. What was the peak in a Great Recession? Uh, the peak in the Great Recession was 12.8. Yeah. So the point that I made last year was I don't think that misery index is working too well because I think there was a lot more misery in the Great Recession than there was in 2022. But It was differently distributed. Y- yes. Yeah. We all were miserable last year, whereas there was a smaller group that bore more misery in, in 2008. 2009. Yeah, yeah. In any case, it was not a good economy last year. Like you said, for a completely different set of circumstances, and I just happened to be more than willing to take those circumstances over high unemployment, but nobody described 2022 as a great roaring economy. Yahoo! No, it, again, even if there was no recession, it still is, well, this isn't... This isn't good. By the way, that misery index, the low that it ever reached. Any idea what the lowest reading ever was on the misery index? Five and a half. 2.97. How do you get to 2.97? Deflation? It was, there must have been deflation. Yeah. And it was back in August of 1953. Okay. So it's, it's been a minute. Yeah. Any guesses as to the highest it's ever been? Late 70s. Uh, early 80s. Close. 21.98 in May of Ouch. 1980. Oh. Like, as, as bad as we describe last year and the high inflation, like, can you imagine 10% inflation with 10% unemployment? I can't only because social media would be even worse than it. I, mean, yeah. he, I think part of the reason why stuff feels worse now is because of social media. Sure. Oh, it's it just, a thousand I mean, percent. I mean, yeah. imagine World War II with Twitter. <laughs> It would just be, it would, it would make it even worse, like the horrors of war, and then it's just people complaining about it all the time. <laughs> you know, it's like, it, I just, I can't imagine, imagine going through basically anything in human history with mm. Twitter, and you're like, oh, I'm so glad that wasn't there for that, you know? The misery index today, 6.5 is where it lands. Mm. Do you know what the average is since it started being tracked back in the 1940s? I would think in that five to seven range. Nine. Wow. Nine is the average misery index, which, which makes sense. Unemployment normally is, has been somewhere five, six percent. Yep. And, and inflation's, inflation's two been to four. three to four. Nine times. Nine times. Th- thank you. Go. Thank you. Uh, so the, the average misery index is nine and a quarter. And right now we're running at six and a half. So if you say, if you ask the question, Americans feel better about the economy, should we believe them? The answer is yes. Unemployment plus inflation are lower, are both lower than their long-term averages. Yeah. Well, when combined, because inflation still is running a little bit harder than you'd like to see. Important question. So we're using these sentiment surveys. One of them's from the <laughs> University of Michigan. You can interrupt. I, I, I want to get... Wh- you can interrupt. In, in other good economies that we've had, okay, the 1960s is frequently referenced as a good sure. economy. Misery index was generally in the 6 to 7 range. Mm. In the late 1990s, tech bubble, hey, everyone's got a job. You yep. know, there's going to be world peace forever. Like, let's all just hang out and be happy and listen to Jennifer Lopez. Mm. Generally running about 6 to 7 on the misery index. Yep. The uh, Trump economy... In you know, 2016 through uh, 2019, misery index, generally between five and a half and seven. Yeah. So it's, it's a good economy right now by all counts. My question for you, 
is there any way to take any of this and say anything about the future? No. It's not predictive in any way, shape, or form. Because if it was, then the misery index being high last year would mean that things would be awful this year. Right. And that's just not the case. Yeah. So I think you can use it to explain certain things in the current economy. Yeah. If, if you want to say the economy is good right now... A lot of evidence to back it up. A lot of evidence to back it up. If you, if you want to say it's bad, you got to search for it. And even the places you search, they don't necessarily mean anything it's people say oh well the you know the ism manufacturing shows that manufacturing is in a contraction yeah that's because everyone bought their grills two years ago no one's buying above ground pools anymore yeah we're done yeah, with that it is like I'm, I'm trying to think of how you make the argument that the u.s economy is bad right now housing uh, is too expensive housing that, is too expensive yeah yep. okay you, you you could point to that and say housing is, too, is unaffordable for a large portion of the population confirmed buy it yep that is a that's a problem with the economy the other ones that i think about like deficits too high yeah it is been too high for a while yeah you know, it's, it, we're not breaking any new ground there 30 years here yeah uh, it's, it's been a while so uh, really the last 15 years that it's been highly concentrated last yeah. 15 but pretty yeah, since people, the financial people have crisis been complaining about it for i guess 100. well people have been complaining about the deficit since before the u.s was a country yeah um, literally but i mean those are the two areas that i can really look at that you can point to and say oh the economy's bad right now well i'm, I'm, I'm a recruiter in technology okay my my economy is bad right now yes but you are not the economy right so, I think that in the answer to both these questions, hey, should we believe them? Well, yes, because if they, they're saying the economy is better than they are. Almost no incentive to lie to the University of Michigan about how you feel about the economy. No, but also the economy by most measures right now is better than it was last year. Yep. It is. Does that mean it's going to last? No, that's the point that we always like to get to just to make you feel bad as we, you know, round out the segment. But ultimately, things are fine now. They might not be in the future. That's the message. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we'll talk a little bit about why economists and market strategists got the first half of 2023 so wrong. The Financial Exchange is now available on your Alexa smart speaker. Ask to play the Financial Exchange and catch up on anything you might have missed. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. The United States Virgin Islands are America's Caribbean paradise. And right now, you can experience St. Croix with a special promotion called a vibe like no other. Book a minimum five-night stay at participating resorts and receive a $250 air credit per person over the age of 16. A must-see for history buffs. St. Croix's two major cities, Christiansted and Frederickstead, boast much of the island's incredible architecture, as well as incredible beaches, world-class cuisine, and abundance of water sports, plus picturesque golf and casinos to keep you rolling at night. This promotion must include hotel and airfare, and booking must be made by September 1st with travel completed by September 30th. Head to America's Caribbean Paradise and experience a vibe like no other on the island of St. Croix. Go to visitusvi.com backslash vibe and book your trip today. That's visitusvi.com backslash vibe. Hi, this is Chuck Zada from the Armstrong Advisory Group. There are always obstacles to achieving your retirement goals, but perhaps none more potentially challenging than inflation. Rising costs make it much harder to meet your retirement income needs, but there are ways to protect your retirement nest egg from inflation. Our new guide is called Inflation, Interest Rates, and Your Retirement, and in it, we explain how inflation can harm your financial security, erode your investment returns, affect your personal taxes, and long-term goals. Inflation has been an ongoing issue, so don't delay. Delay. Call us at 800-393-4001 and ask for your free guide today. Learn how to protect your retirement savings from high inflation. That's 800-393-4001 or you can request the guide online at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in an The financial exchange. I'm joined today by estate planning attorney Todd Lutzke from the law firm of Cushing and Dolan with your financial exchange quick tip of the day. And today we're talking about techniques that can help protect your assets from long term care expenses last minute. Todd, what happens to your home when a spouse enters a nursing home? And no planning has been done. And what if you have a vacation home, too? Is it different for single individuals? Great question. And so let's run through and we got to go quick. One, the home for a married couple, always non-countable, 
always non-leanable. So that's great. It doesn't matter the value of the property. Next, if you're single, the home is non-countable, provided you check a box that says, I intend to return home, but leanable, but it also needs to be less than a, about a million thirty-three thousand dollars at least here in Massachusetts. It's different for other states. So you're okay there. However, vacation homes are countable unless you convert them into rental properties. Then they're non-countable. However, they are leanable. So the state's going to recover. And it's okay if they're leanable because the rate in which you're paying on the Medicaid rate is about half as much as the nursing home private pay rate. So it's important to understand how to make assets non-countable last minute. Todd Lutzke and the estate planning experts at Cushing and Dolan have written a brand new guide that details last minute Medicaid eligibility. You can request this brand new guide by calling 866-848-5699. Once again, the phone number 866 866- 8485699 or you can request it from their website legalexchangeshow.com The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Text us at 617-362-1385 with your comments and questions about today's show. And let us know what you think about the stories we are covering. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. There is a piece in Bloomberg today. It's titled, After a Misjudged First Half. Strategist face a short squeeze. Well, we got to talk about a few things here. First, Michael, short squeeze. Do you want to define what it is, or would you prefer me to define what it is? Uh, generally speaking, a short squeeze uh, would be when you're betting a ge- betting on a stock going down, and it starts going in the other direction, and you basically get squeezed out of your uh, position by doing so because. You have hypothetically unlimited losses if you are betting against a stock that just goes up. And specifically, it's okay if you want to close that position out. If you're if you are short a stock, you have effectively borrowed it in order to sell it into right. the market. And so, what you have to do to close that out is you have to buy the stock back and then return the shares to whoever you borrowed them from. Mm-hmm. And so, the process of doing that, think about what it is. Okay, I got to close out this short position. I got to buy more stock. Great. More buying means, hey, tends to push prices upward. So when we talk about a short squeeze, it's a phenomenon that tends to push share prices up because of the buying that's required to close the position out and so on and so forth. Now, what's interesting here is that this article was published today. And it's almost like it didn't pay attention to what's happened over the last month and a half because... It's like this: the, the market's already moved up meaningfully in June and July. So when it's talking, is, is there anything better than watching strategists go on to Bloomberg and CNBC and just having to eat their incorrect predictions? No, and and this gets at the. There's a, a great quote from Helene Meisler, who uh, is a uh, an analyst who I I just happen to follow her on on Twitter. And she has a, a pinned tweet, and it just says, nothing like price to change sentiment. And this yeah. is what you see is, hey, guess what? The S&P 500 went up, you know, 5% or whatever. Oh, now all the analysts come out and they start raising their price targets for the S&P 500 for year end. Or Tesla fell, you know, 10% yesterday. Now the analysts come out and start downgrading Tesla. It's, it's this reflexive phenomenon where it's they pay attention to themselves and what's been going on with what they cover, and then they basically change their predictions based on what's already happened. And I I think ultimately, this is one of the things where it's just, again, if if you're reading an analyst or if you're reading, you know, that this company changed their price target on this and that, and you're trying to make investment decisions based on that, this is absolutely one of the dangers is that oh, gee, you know, the price already went up, and so now you get analysts revising their price targets up, but the movement's already happened. Right. 
and you don't realize that because you're just reading an article based on what the analysts said. There still are some pretty bearish bets out there for where the S&P 500 lands at the end of the day. Uh, taking a look around here, very, very few of the big banks and strategists out there have kept their predictions where they started for the year. But uh, Wells Fargo, for instance, started at 4,200. They're keeping it there. Um, but, I mean, you've got Cantor Fitzgerald calling for the, the, the S&P 500 to finish the year at 3,500 on the S&P 500. This is the We're other, at 4,500 We, right we talked about this at the beginning of the year. This is also the reason why, this is another reason why I don't like these year-end predictions is it tells you nothing about the path that stocks took to get there. Let's say that we do finish the year at 3,500, and I'm not saying that we will, sure. but let's say that you do, which is you know 23% below where the S&P 500 is today. Yeah. Does that mean that it was, you know... A bad year for the whole year in stocks. No, you could have made a ton of money if you just sold it. If you had bought and sold at the right time, like yeah. it, it doesn't tell you anything about the the context of it. I mean, in 2020, just as an example, if I told you that the S and P 500 was up, you know, however many X percent it was, you'd say, "Wow, what a great year." Well, but it fell 35 percent over a span of three weeks in March. Also, I would be fascinated to see an actual analysis of what portion of these companies actually get within 10 percent of their guesses who's the most accurate basis. yeah what's the what's the standard deviation of their errors how close are they to the targets typically my guess is not terribly i haven't even heard of a couple of these what what is 22 v research never heard of 22 v how did uh, 20 is that a, a battery do you put what is that how you charge your car with yeah. a 22 volt what, what what is 22 v <laughs> research yeah I've, I've never heard of it how does Nor that end I. up on a list right between Scotiabank and UBS? So I, I don't even know how that gets onto a list like this. But yeah, pretty wide range. Lesson for the day that we put out every day is uh, if you read one thing or see one article that convinces you that something makes a great or poor investment, it's probably a bad premise to start it, with. It just might not end well for you because you don't have a strong foundation to build that thesis if if you're so easily swayed by one data point well what's going to happen when you know something goes against you and you decide oh well, i i got to get out of this right and maybe you do it the exact wrong time it's just re reading headlines on cnbc and bloomberg is not an investment strategy it can be it just doesn't sound like a terrible it might good not one. be a good one <laughs> yes <laughs> Uh, let's see. Untangling the U.S. from China's economy is messy. Not the Argentinian footballer, but rather dirty. <laughs> uh. What? He just had his uh, signing thing with uh, Inter Miami last what week. What a Lionel Messi punch. Did you see Good the? Uh, did you see the ad that uh, Apple TV put up? For uh, for him, MLS. No. Yes. No. So you know how Apple TV has the rights to a bunch of MLS games. Yes. You yeah. might not I don't, that, I don't they, think a lot of people know that, to be honest. You might not know it, but they do. The, Apple TV Plus has rights to a bunch of MLS games. And he gets a cut of it now. And so they have this ad campaign that is, it's the Apple TV Plus logo, and then next to it, it's... Soccer ball? Nope. Oh. It's a pink goat emoji. Because Lionel Messi is known, you know, like, he's basically the... Greatest widely acknowledged as, like, the, the best well, why, soccer player of all pink, time. Why pink, though? Wouldn't it be blue? Because Inter uh, Miami's colors are pink. Oh, they have pink uh, I, was thinking of, I was thinking of the World Cup. Never yeah, mind. so it's kind of it's it's you have to be plugged in. But if you're a soccer fan and you no. see that, it's 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 pretty clever. Would no way unsubscribed. And how does this have to do with U.S. untangling <laughs> size to China? Well, Messi decided that he did not want to play in China or Saudi Arabia. Got it. I don't think China was really on the table, but no. the Saudis were for a yeah. while. They'll tell you they were. Who will? China. I don't know if the Chinese government would admit they lost out on Messi to the U.S. They might tell people that he's actually playing in China, but I don't think they'd tell them that they lost out, yeah. We have Lionel <laughs> Richie in China <laughs> doing a three-day tour, but is Lionel Richie still alive? Yeah. He is? Yeah. Tony Bennett is not. I saw that. Tony Bennett died yeah, today. Yeah. That's sad. Really is. Let's take a quick break, and then when we come back, we will talk untangling the U.S. from China's economy.
Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at TFE Show. Breaking business news is always first right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. It happens all over Massachusetts. In every home and every community. Be careful in your bike. Learning can happen anytime, anywhere. Hi guys. We'll see you at practice this weekend. And no matter how learning takes place in your family's life, Desi is there as your partner. The Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Never stop learning. Find out more at mass.gov slash back to school. Sponsored by the Massachusetts Department for Elementary and Secondary Education. The United States Virgin Islands are America's Caribbean paradise. And right now, you can experience St. Croix with a special promotion called a vibe like no other. Book a minimum five-night stay at participating resorts and receive a $250 air credit per person over the age of 16. A must-see for history buffs. St. Croix's two major cities, Christiansted and Frederickstead, boast much of the island's incredible architecture, as well as incredible beaches, world-class cuisine, an abundance of water sports, plus picturesque golf and casinos to keep you rolling at night. This promotion must include hotel and airfare, and booking must be made by September 1st with travel completed by September 30th. Head to America's Caribbean Paradise and experience a vibe like no other on the island of St. Croix. Go to visitusvi.com backslash vibe and book your trip today. That's visitusvi.com backslash vibe. Understanding the Medicaid process is a key component to any successful estate plan. If you or a loved one needs a nursing home stay and you aren't prepared for the expense, it can be devastating to your savings. Cushing & Dolan's new guide is called Last Minute Medicaid Eligibility. It'll walk you through any changes to the Medicaid rules, how to adjust to those changes, and best practices that can help educate you on how to manage expenses you might incur down the road. Don't delay. Call right now, 866-848-5699, and get your free copy of this new guide, Last Minute Medicaid Eligibility. Let the experts at Cushing & Dolan help you protect the assets you've worked so hard to attain. Get their new guide today by calling 866-848-5699. That's 866-848-5699. You can also request the guide online by visiting their website, LegalExchangeShow.com. That's LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing & Dolan. Cushing & Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing & Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Hi, this is Chuck and Mark from the Armstrong Advisory Group, and we're here today to talk about our new guide, Inflation, Interest Rates, and Your Retirement. Mark, when we talk about inflation, how does it act almost as a tax on an individual over time? Well, loosely, it means at the end of the day, you've got less of what you had saved or what you're earning to spend on goods and services. In that sense, it's like a tax. Sometimes when people say inflation is like a tax, they mean because the government prints money to finance its spending. Sure. And that money ultimately comes out of your purchasing power. So inflation is like a tax in a couple different ways, but practically it means your money goes less far. What about as it relates to gains that you may see in your investments Uh and then how inflation acts almost as an extra tax in that sense? Great point. You're taxed not only on the real appreciation of your stock or whatever securities you happen to own. You're also taxed on any appreciation that's due solely to inflation. So if your investments went up 10% last year and inflation also went up 10% last year, that's a lot more than it actually did. Sure. But just for purposes of an example, you would be taxed on that 10% even though the dollars invested go no farther than they did a year ago. If you went and sold that investment. If you went and sold it, right. Folks, the guide that we have this month is titled Inflation, Interest Rates, and Your Retirement. And there are two different ways that you can request it to learn more about this topic. The first is by calling 800-393-4001. The second way is by going to armstrongadvisory.com and requesting it there. That phone number again is 800-393-4001. 
or request the guide at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Time now for Wall Street Watch. A complete look at what's moving markets so far today, right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. The Dow is looking to extend its winning streak to 10 today after nine straight positive sessions as earnings season continues to chug along. Speaking of earnings, according to facts, at 73% of S&P 500 companies that have reported thus far have exceeded analyst expectations. As for markets, the Dow up by 47 points, S&P 500 is up by 5 points, and the Nasdaq down by 10 points at the moment. Russell 2000, excuse me, Russell 2000 is edging higher by 2 points. 10-year Treasury yield that is down by 3 basis points at 3.82%. Crude oil up 1 and a quarter percent, trading at $76 and 59 cents a barrel. American Express reported mixed second quarter results ahead of the open this morning as it beat earnings forecast but reported a smaller than expected revenue. Adjusted earnings per share came in at $2.89 versus estimates of $2.81 per share, while the financial firm generated $15.05 billion for the quarter, short of expectations of $15.48 billion. Amex noted it continued to see strong demand for its premium products, and the company also said millennial and Gen Z consumers remained its fastest-growing customer base, representing over 60% of new consumer accounts. That stock down by 5%. Capital One Financial also revealed mixed second quarter results, beating on earnings but falling short on revenue forecasts. Total deposits also fell 2% at the end of the quarter. That stock up by three quarters of a percent. Meanwhile, shares in AutoNation down by 7% after the car retailer beat expectations on the top and bottom lines as demand for new vehicles and aftermarket services offset the impact of a decline in used car sales. The company generated $6.89 billion in revenue, above forecasts of $6.78. AutoNation said its second quarter unit sales of new retail vehicles rose 8%, while unit sales of used vehicles fell 11%. And CSX shares are down 4.5% after the transportation company just fell short of revenue estimates for the second quarter, generating $3.7 billion versus $3.74 billion. Its $0.49 adjusted earnings per share did come in line with estimates. I'm Tucker Silva, and that's Wall Street Watch. Untangling the U.S. from China's economy is messy. Where's the, the, the messiest part of this, Michael? The fact that both countries have businesses that are located in each other's countries and employs significant number of people from each of the countries and generally speaking that there's been decades now of uh, of ties between those two businesses so trying to rip it out from the roots is tricky challenging uh i don't know if you've seen the news but uh at this point uh i believe at least for the last couple of months china is no longer the u.s's biggest trading partner biggest uh yeah biggest trading partner it's mexico Really? Mm Mm-hmm. This is, uh, if you look at, and this is just data from the first couple months of the year from the Census Bureau. This was published back in May, so I know we've gotten a couple more, but I I haven't seen them up to date yet. Quote, U.S.-Mexico bilateral trade totaling $124.6 billion in the first two months of the year, with Mexican imports to the U.S. amounting to $72.7 billion, and U.S. exports to Mexico totaling $51.9 billion. It's a 10% year-over-year rise in traded volumes. And uh, bu- 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 let me get the China data here. Oh, this doesn't reference it, but it, it does say that this is the it's the biggest trading partner for the first two months of the year, at least. Maybe there's a seasonal component sure. to it. I, I don't I don't know the month by month trade data, but ultimately it's going to be a very long process for a number of reasons. Investment in China, obviously just the, the normal flow of goods that is built up over the last 20 to 30 years that comes from China to U.S. West Coast ports. There's a whole lot that's tied into this. And even, you know, major 
proponents of you know China investment historically, like Apple, have announced that they're going to be diversifying production away from China, but it's not going to be total, and it still is over you know a, a decade long period to get there because things are so entwined in the Chinese economy right now. Right. I mean, there are beyond trade with the United States. The big question about China, I think, is honestly just fascinating to me, which is they have this economy now that is dramatically slowing, a population that is shrinking. shrinking. And so is the dream of continuing to develop, right, continuing to become this modern economy with a you know, uh, high degree of wealth or GDP per capita or you know, whatever that target was, is it still achievable, or is it, or is this kind of where it's going to level off at this? Has, has the Chinese economy completely plateaued from here, and you're not going to see continued development there? There's a really interesting question to ask that, that no one really is asking, which is, what if Chinese influence in the world economy and in geopolitics has peaked? It, it's just so tough to imagine, given it is. the narrative over the last decade. You and I don't remember this because we weren't alive, but in the late 70s and early 80s, there was a sense that Japan was going to overtake the U.S. in a number of economic and geopolitical areas. It was, talk, it was talked about at that time as an almost certainty. It was. And there are a lot of parallels between that and China now, including you know the demographics and things like that. Very different from a political sense in terms of you know forms of governance and, and things along those lines. But ultimately, that you know, it was it was almost destiny. It was talked about that that Japan was going to be the next great world power, and it it just didn't turn into that. You wonder if you're seeing something similar from China in terms of maybe a peaking of its influence or getting close to that, just because the demographic issue is a big one. Mm-hmm. And the other piece that that quite honestly, I always look at is if you're not directly under the authoritarian's rule. You tend to get tired of them pretty quickly when you're doing business with them. You know, it's okay. It's one thing where China says, hey, you can't have any, you know, pictures of Xi and Winnie the Pooh next to each other in China. But imagine that they go to France and say, hey, you've got to take down all pictures of Xi and Winnie the Pooh next to each other. Right. That's good. Like, we're just going to get a little tired of this. You know, that reach can only extend so far. And I just wonder if they're. I, I wonder if China's overplaying their hand a little bit. And quite honestly, I mean, you make the comparison to Japan, and a lot of people right now are making the comparison to between China and Japan, right? Declining population, uh, rapid development. But quite frankly, I mean, China is still light years away from Japan in terms of GDP per capita, in terms of quality of life, in terms of just overall development. Oh, yeah. And so if they start plateauing now, it's a very, very different story. Yeah, it's just, I, and and there's a piece in the Wall Street Journal today, China's lost decade for investors has already happened, and it talks about how, you know, Chinese stocks have not really done much in the last 15 years. I'll quote from here. Investors in China have lost a decade or more already. Domestic share prices are lower than they were in 2007, and earnings per share are the same as they were in 2013. No wonder Chinese stocks are among the cheapest in the world. Just because you've had one lost decade doesn't mean you might not have a second. Sure. And maybe it gets worse. I mean, uh, the, the, the Chinese economy is very quite bad right now. That's the technical term for it. And... Ultimately, there are only so many levers that they can pull. I, I know that for some reason in the U.S., we like to talk about the Chinese government as if they're always smarter than everyone else. And yeah. They're always doing omniscient. The, and, and oh, yeah. they have these great long term plans and, and they always think ahead. And that kind of look at them like, well, look, the Soviet Union had long term plans also, and that worked out pretty badly for them ultimately. And this is what you do with a rivalry, though. You, you know, you assume the worst out of your rival, and that they're going to overtake you. And that, I don't know. I, I, I think that's just kind of the attitude. It is, you have. but sometimes I think you got to look at it. And I, I've said this before: if you had to pick anywhere in the world to start a business right now, at this point in time, what other countries are on the list aside from the U.S. that you would even consider? India is one of them that I would maybe look at, just because 
I, I do think you know this is a country on it's a country on the upswing that its best years are. What's you know, the one in South America we've talked about again? Guyana. Guyana, yeah, yeah. But that's so that's just because it's okay. You, you found a bunch of oil, right? You know, but where there's a ton of money and ton of growth, there's always uh, there's always opportunity. The one that's really interesting from a a future growth perspective perspective is Nigeria, yeah, which is projected to be one of the top five countries by population in the world in the next 30, 40 years. Mm-hmm. Be you know, again, so like even that is, I still if you wanted to make money, if you wanted to start a business for the next five years. Where, where do you pick aside from the U.S.? Right. What, one more piece on China before Maybe we go Sweden. To... Seems nice there. Okay. One more piece on China before we go to break, though. They are making a lot of comparisons between China and Japan. And I do not believe that China wants their economy to go to the way of Japan. And so I very much doubt that they end up repeating the same mistakes that Japan did during you know, the 70s, 80s, and 90s in terms of development. No, they'll make different ones because, as Mark Fandetti likes to point out, top-down authoritarian systems, they don't have any mechanism for feedback to get rid of bad ideas. Hmm. And so they tend to collapse under the weight of the bad ideas the longer they go on because there's no mechanism to say, no, we shouldn't be doing this because dissent is punished. True. Let's take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll talk about what we're seeing in regional banks right after this. Watch the show every day on Twitch TV, Facebook, and our website, FinancialExchangeShow.com. We're breaking down the biggest business stories of the day only on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Hi, this is Mike Armstrong from the Armstrong Advisory Group. Inflation poses a threat to your retirement goals because it reduces the value of your hard-earned savings. With the costs of necessary goods and services rising as quickly as they have in more than 40 years, it's time for you to consider how high inflation affects your retirement planning. We've written a new guide called Inflation, Interest Rates, and Your Retirement. And in it, we discuss why it's important to incorporate inflation into your retirement savings and investment strategy. Don't let inflation chip away at your nest. Call us at 800-393-4001 and ask for your free guide today. Or you can request the guide online at armstrongadvisory.com or set up an appointment to meet with one of our advisors by clicking the Get Started button on the homepage. That's armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. The United States Virgin Islands are America's Caribbean paradise. And right now, you can experience St. Croix with a special promotion called a vibe like no other. Book a minimum five-night stay at participating resorts and receive a $250 air credit per person over the age of 16. A must-see for history buffs. St. Croix's two major cities, Christiansted and Frederickstead, boast much of the island's incredible architecture, as well as incredible beaches, world-class cuisine, and abundance of water sports, plus picturesque golf and casinos to keep you rolling at night. This promotion must include hotel and airfare, and booking must be made by September 1st with travel completed by September 30th. Head to America's Caribbean Paradise and experience a vibe like no other on the island of St. Croix. Go to visitusvi.com backslash vibe and book your trip today. That's visitusvi.com backslash vibe. Understanding the Medicaid process is critically important if you're retired or getting close to retiring. Changes to Medicaid occur almost every year, and if you're not up to speed on the latest information, your assets could be at risk if you or your spouse need nursing home care. Cushing and Dolan can help. Their brand new guide is called Last Minute Medicaid Eligibility. In it, you'll find important information regarding numerous strategies that are available to save your primary home, a vacation home, or any rental property you may own if the nursing home comes calling. You've worked hard to achieve wealth. See that it's protected by getting your copy of this new guide, Last Minute Medicaid Eligibility. Call 866-848-5699. That's 866-848-5699. Or you can request it online right now by visiting LegalExchangeShow.com. That's LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. 
My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. Summer adventures are where memories are made. Add some flavor to your Massachusetts summer by eating like a local. On a gorgeous summer day, head to one of dozens of pick-your-own farms for the freshest blueberries, raspberries, or apples you can find. Or discover delectable ingredients to craft a homemade meal from one of Massachusetts' local specialty grocers. There are wonderful items to find from across the state. Need some inspiration? Map your fresh food adventure at eatlikealocalinma.org. Sponsored by Mass Farmers Markets. This is your home for the most comprehensive coverage of the economy and the trends on Wall Street. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. This segment of the Financial Exchange is brought to you in part by the U.S. Virgin Islands Department of Tourism. Act now and experience St. Croix in a vibe like no other. St. Croix has rich colonial history, amazing beaches, and world-class cuisine. Book a minimum of a five-night stay at participating resorts and earn a $250 air credit for travelers 16 and older. This promotion must include airfare and hotel, and travel must be booked by September 1st and completed by September 30th. Go to visitusvi.com backslash vibe and book your trip today. Headline the journal, big regional banks reported stable deposits for investors. That counts as great news. And, Mike, this is just talking about how as we get through earnings season or start to get through earnings season, regional banks are saying, yeah, the, the deposit flight that happened in March and April, it's not really a problem. We're, we've stabilized. Yeah. I, I want to define a problem, I guess. So We're not going out of business. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's the part where I'm a little bit confused why investors are so enthusiastic about this because – if these banks were still having deposit flight to the point that they were going to need to close, we would have all known by now. Right? I mean, it would be something you'd have to basically interrupt markets but it's to good tell to see, everybody. It, well, it depends how significant the flight is. Sure. Yeah, you know, if it if had been a slow dribble still, then it, they might not have had to disclose it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you had some Citizens Financial had higher deposits right. in, in the quarter. So, you know, these are the kinds of things that you're seeing now where – Again, the, the only threat to these banks is if large percentages of their customers withdraw their deposits. Right. And that's not happening. So it's just from a probability standpoint, again, if you're if you're looking at how to build, you know, a valuation matrix for a company, it's well, I think there's X percentage probability of this happening, X of uh, Y of this and Z of this. Hey, this has moved more into the camp of well, it's not declining anymore, so it's not as likely that things are going to fall apart soon, and so that raises your yeah. you know earnings estimate, and, and so you know you see money flocking in. I think the big piece though is to acknowledge how they were able to stem the tide, if you will, stop the bleeding, which is they're needed to pay for deposits, and that's the you know that is the slow bleed problem. You know, it's not. Yeah, you know, your head's getting decapitated, but you, you've lost a limb here, <laughs> and, uh, and and gosh, <laughs> it's much more of a slow bleed because yeah, now it's okay. I've got you know, Sizen still has a ton of mortgages at three percent, and as I mentioned on the show the other day, I walked into one of their branches and they were offering a ten month CD at five and a half. So that is going to be a real drag on profitability, and that's not going to be a quick fix. Understanding the Medicaid process is critically important if you're retired or getting close to retiring. Changes to Medicaid occur almost every year, and if you're not up to speed on the latest information, your assets could be at risk if you or your spouse need nursing home care. Cushing and Dolan can help. Their brand new guide is called Last Minute Medicaid Eligibility. In it, you'll find important information regarding numerous strategies that are available to save your primary home, a vacation home, or any rental property you may own if the nursing home comes calling. You've worked hard to achieve wealth. See that it's protected by getting your copy of this new guide, Last Minute Medicaid Eligibility. Call 866-848-5699. Once again, 866 866- 
848-5699, or you can request it from their website, legalexchangeshow.com. The proceeding was paid for, and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. FTX sues Sam Bankman Fried and former associates seeking more than a billion dollars. Man, it's been a while since we covered this one. Yeah. yeah. It Months. has. Uh, so a little SBF news uh, is is always kind of depressing but entertaining as well. So why is his former company suing him? Well, because it's controlled by the bankruptcy court now, and uh, they are trying to claw back as much money as humanly possible. And from what I understand, getting uh, stonewalled quite a bit from uh, Bankman Fried's family and close connections. Yeah, there are. Uh, there was a report yesterday that Bankman Fried had made a ten million dollar gift to I think his dad that they're trying to call back now. Did you see the report from Fortune? I think about Bankman Fried's brother who is trying to buy an island nation for the apocalypse. Which apocalypse? I don't know. I can't keep track of them at one. this point. Well, but, uh, here's the thing. Depending on the type, you want to have a different island, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's no one size fits all. You want you deal differently with the zombie apocalypse uh, from the bugs ask- coming out of the core of the earth, you know, giant bugs going to eat us and stuff like that. Asteroids apocalypse. striking the Pacific Ocean, you don't really want to own a South Pacific island. Did you see that the number one thing that Americans want NASA to focus on is detecting asteroids that may hit us? Um, it's like a good use of time. I think it's high up on the when list. When did we get so scared? Round I want Armageddon. NASA to go and do cool stuff and, and like find out. Like what? I think there is nothing cooler than preventing an asteroid from striking our planet. Just uh, yeah, so that'll on the be, same page. That would be nice. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Even if we're going to detect it, what are we going to do? We're going to send a uh, bunch of oil riggers we're up there. send a bunch of oil riggers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How is that even a question? And not train astronauts to do the, that task. <laughs> They're not called oil I, riggers. What are they called? Oil drillers. Oh, drillers. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. You both made that mistake. Yeah. But, no, I, I want NASA to go out. And, and send me to the moon or Mars or something like that. That's what I want to do. Been there, done yeah. that. I haven't. As human has. Okay, that's great. Allegedly. Humans have been skiing. I still like to go every winter. <laughs> you know, it still would be fun to go up there. Tucker, are you a conspiracy <laughs> no. theorist that doesn't believe we've been to the moon? I just want to clarify here while we're on No air. way. <laughs> so... How did we get on this topic? I don't know. Apocalypse it's... Island. Oh, yeah. oh good. Yes. Then you've got... Uh, Bagman Free's brother, Gabe, wanted to use FTX Foundation to buy the island nation of Noru and set up a bunker for him and other effective altruists. Good for Gabe. Go there. Go that to your island. That doesn't seem very altruistic. No. What take, about the bunker for the rest of us? Take yeah. Sam with you. Caroline Ellison <laughs> Shoot them paid to the herself moon. a bonus of $22.5 million and transferred it to a personal bank account and then used to invest millions of dollars in a company focused on artificial intelligence research, mm. supposedly. Let's take a quick break here. We've got more Financial Exchange coming up in Hour 2. Hi, this is Chuck and Mark from the Armstrong Advisory Group, and we're here today to talk about our new guide, Inflation, Interest Rates, and Your Retirement. Mark, when we talk about inflation, how does it act almost as a tax on an individual over time? Well, loosely, it means at the end of the day, you've got less of what you had saved or what you're earning to spend on goods and services. In that sense, it's like a tax. Sometimes when people say inflation is like a tax, they mean because the government prints money to finance its spending. Sure. And that money ultimately comes out of your purchasing power. So inflation is like a tax in a couple different ways, but practically it means your money goes less far. What about as it relates to gains that you may see in your investments uh-huh. and then how inflation acts almost as an extra tax in that sense? Great point. You're taxed not only on the real appreciation of your stocks or whatever securities you happen to own. You're also taxed on any appreciation that's due solely to inflation. So if your investments went up 10% last year and inflation also went up 10% last year, that's a lot more than it actually did. Sure. But just for purposes of an example, you would be taxed on that 10% even though the dollars invested go no farther than if they did a year ago. If you went and sold that investment. If you went and sold it, Right. Folks, the guide that we have this month is titled Inflation, Interest Rates, and Your Retirement. And there are two different ways that you can request it to learn more about this topic. The first is by calling 800-393-4001. 
The second way is by going to armstrongadvisory.com and requesting it there. That phone number again is 800-393-4001 or request the guide at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Tuning into the baseball game, monitoring the incoming storm, catching your favorite talk show. These are just a few of the reasons more than 80 million Americans depend on AM radio each month. And did you know AM radio is the backbone of the emergency alert system? It's reliable, free, and public safety depends on it. Text AM to 52886 and tell Congress we need AM radio in cars. Message and data rates may apply. You may receive up to four messages a month, and you may text stop to stop. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. Environmental nonprofit Ocean River Institute is working with communities to tackle climate change with nature-based solutions that feature slowing water down and building more soil with grasses and plants. Research indicates that people acting in their own neighborhoods can build an inch of soil in a year and slow sea level rise down by as much as 25%. Please visit OceanRiver.org for more information on opportunities to make a difference and go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greener and bluer planet Earth. This is the Money Matters Radio Network, WBNW 1120 AM and W275 CM FM. Concord, Boston, the Money Matters Radio Network. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. Understanding the Medicaid process is crucial to a successful estate plan. If you need a nursing home stay and aren't prepared, the expense can be devastating to your savings. Call right now, 866-848-5699, and get your free copy of Cushing & Dolan's new guide, Last Minute Medicaid Eligibility. That's 866-848-5699, or request it online right now at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for, and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing & Dolan. Cushing & Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing & Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The United States Virgin Islands are America's Caribbean paradise. And right now, you can experience St. Croix with a special promotion called a vibe like no other. Book a minimum five-night stay at participating resorts and receive a $250 air credit per person over the age of 16. A must-see for history buffs. St. Croix's two major cities, Christiansted and Frederickstead, boast much of the island's incredible architecture, as well as incredible beaches, world-class cuisine, and abundance of water sports, plus picturesque golf and casinos to keep you rolling at night. This promotion must include hotel and airfare, and booking must be made by September 1st with travel completed by September 30th. Head to America's Caribbean Paradise and experience a vibe like no other on the island of St. Croix. Go to visitusvi.com backslash vibe and book your trip today. That's visitusvi.com backslash vibe. I studied Spanish in college and never got fluent, but then I tried Babbel. Want the most effective way to learn another language? In just 15 minutes a day, Babbel's bite-sized lessons will have you learning another language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is all conversation-based, so it gets you speaking quickly about things you actually talk about in the real world. You'll really see a difference in how you can speak and how conversational you can be in just a few weeks. Babbel isn't just lessons. You can listen to podcasts, play games, watch videos. You can even take live online classes with a language teacher. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. The lessons online and in the app make it easy to learn from pretty much anywhere. University studies have shown that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a semester of college Spanish. If you want to learn a new language, there's no better way than Babbel. Go to Babbel.com to try for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. Babbel dot com.
This is Tucker Silva of the Financial Exchange, and I'm joined today by estate planning attorney Todd Lutzke from the law firm of Cushing & Dolan with your Financial Exchange quick tip of the day. And today we're talking about techniques that can help protect your assets from long-term care expenses last minute. Todd, is the healthy spouse allowed to keep anything when the sick spouse enters a nursing home? And what happens if the sick spouse has the majority of the income? So couple of things. Let's distinguish between assets and income. When I'm talking about assets for now, I'm just talking about monetary assets for this purpose. They are allowed to look at all the money and give $148,000 approximately to the healthy spouse. That's the maximum amount of assets the healthy spouse is allowed to have from a monetary standpoint. The sick spouse is allowed to have a maximum of $2,000 of assets, again, from the monetary standpoint. Now, income is a different story. With regard to income, the healthy spouse is allowed to have as much income as he or she could possibly make. Doesn't matter. However, the healthy spouse is also required to have what they call a minimum monthly maintenance needs allowance of at least approximately $2,500. So all the other income after that that the sick spouse has does need to go to the nursing home. So a difference between income and asset limits, folks. Todd Lutzke and the estate planning experts at Cushing and Dolan have written a brand new guide that details last minute Medicaid eligibility. You can request this brand new guide by calling 866-848-5699. Or if you prefer, you can go to their website, legalexchangeshow.com and request it there. Once again, 866-848-5699 or you can request it from their website legalexchangeshow.com The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The Financial Exchange is produced by Money Matters Radio and is hosted by employees of the Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor that provides investment advisory services. All opinions expressed are solely those of the hosts, do not reflect the opinions of Armstrong Advisory or anyone else, and do not guarantee profit. Investments can lose money. This program does not offer any specific financial or investment advice. Please consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong and Money Matters Radio do not compensate each other for referrals and are not affiliated. This is the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zotta and Mike Armstrong. Your exclusive look at business and financial news affecting your day, your city, your world. Stay informed and up to date about economic and market trends. Plus, breaking business news every day. The Financial Exchange is a proud partner of the Disabled American Veterans Department of Massachusetts. Help us support our great American heroes by taking part in this year's DAV 5K. For more information, visit DAV5K.Boston. The DAV 5K Boston is proudly presented by Veterans Development Corporation. This is the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zotta and Mike Armstrong. A little after 11 o'clock here on the Financial Exchange, and we've got some very modest upward drift happening in markets today after a downward move yesterday. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 76 points, a little less than a quarter percent. The S&P 500 is up 13 points, a little more than a quarter percent. And the NASDAQ is up 17 points, a little more than a tenth of a percent right now. The 10-year U.S. Treasury is three basis points lower to 3.83%. West Texas Intermediate for oil is trading at 76.45 up 80 cents a barrel and we've got gold down $7.90 an ounce to 1963. Anything else catching your eye today, Mike? Not particular. A little bit of a calm down from uh, people's worst nightmares yesterday apparently. Let's talk a little bit about the US as an energy exporter. So About half of, I'm sorry, the U.S. exports around 4.1 million barrels of oil a day. It's a lot of oil. It's a big chunk. Half of that goes out of Corpus Christi, Texas. It's pretty wild. It's nuts. It's nuts. And so what you have here is that Corpus Christi is just this oil transit boom town i guess Mm -hmm. is how i would define it it's again it's been involved in the energy industry in the u.s for as as long as you know the the business has been around 
But it's really in the last 15, 20 years that I feel like it's become this mecca of oil export in the U.S. Well, and it wasn't since the last 15 or so years that the United States became such a large ex- oil exporter. Yeah. I'd be interested yeah. to see what that what that looks like on the on the timeline, but I don't think it was much before that that you know the shale boom led to the United States being able to export this much oil and nat gas and other products. No, and, and effectively what you see here is the reason for this is because once you start to build some of the facilities for refining and exporting oil, ultimately you end up just with this this development similar to Silicon Valley where Hey, it's all already there. We can just expand. We've got this ecosystem yeah. that develops. Just add more pipelines. And get so it there you just easily. keep funneling more and more stuff there. In, in this case, the stuff is oil that ends up going there. So you get 2 million barrels a day that are flowing through Corpus Christi, Texas. And the interesting piece here is just that, again, when, when you look at all of the, the different things that are going on here, I mean, you got all these boats, that, these super tankers that need to come in and they have to be coordinated because they're three to four football fields long and you don't want those to you know crash obviously so you got you got all the logistics involved in that you got all of the pipelines that you have to keep flowing on a regular basis because you got ships waiting to take the oil so it's it's a very logistically heavy process to actually get this to work and it's fascinating that it actually does work as well as it does quite honestly and that there are so few hiccups with it yeah I don't think there's much else to expand on. Like, I expect this to continue for a few decades to come, uh, probably not in perpetuity, but uh, for quite some time to come here, because as we all know, while oil demand may have peaked or be close to peaking, it's going to be quite a long trail off before we stop using something like this. And it's not just oil. There's a uh, big LNG plant there that uh, effectively takes nat gas and converts it to LNG for export. You've got to, I just want to read a couple of the things that are going on. Since 2020, dredgers have been working at deepening the port's ship channel inner harbor to 54 feet from 47 feet. Currently, a more than $680 million operation that will allow many tankers to fill up close to capacity. Uh, you've got Corpus Christi, by the way, didn't realize it's, a, it's not this small town. It's 320,000 people Man. right now. What percentage of them do you think are involved in the energy industry uh, of adults? Basically, if you don't operate a hotel, Airbnb, or Restaurant, food place, yeah. then you work for the oil industry. Yeah, it's 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 got that kind of vibe there. So it's when when reading about, it, I just pulled this from uh, from Wikipedia, just talking about the uh, the economy. Uh, Corpus Christi, by the way, is also the fifth largest U.S. port in terms of goods volume, just because of the sure. amount of oil that goes uh, goes through there. It's also the uh, original home of the headquarters of Whataburger, believe mm. it or not. So that I found to be uh, interesting. But, yeah, it, it's just a, uh, a, again, just a massive oil hub uh, that in particular, since the export restrictions were listed on cru- lifted on crude oil back in 2015, has just been growing by leaps and bounds. Right. Let's take a quick break here. When we come back, we are going to be joined by Ken Johnson. He is the Associate Dean of Graduate Programs at the College of Business at FAU. He is joining us right after this. Missed one of our shows? Catch up anytime by asking your Alexa smart speaker to play the Financial Exchange. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Hi, this is Chuck Zada from the Armstrong Advisory Group. There are always obstacles to achieving your retirement goals, but perhaps none more potentially challenging than inflation. Rising costs make it much harder to meet your retirement income needs, but there are ways to protect your retirement nest egg from inflation. Our new guide is called Inflation, Interest Rates, and Your Retirement, and in it, we explain how inflation can harm your financial security, erode your investment returns, affect your personal taxes, and long-term goals. Inflation has been an ongoing issue, so don't delay. Delay. Call us at 800-393-4001 and ask for your free guide today. Learn how to protect your retirement savings from high inflation. That's 800-393-4001 or you can request the guide online at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. 
Summer adventures are where memories are made. Add some flavor to your Massachusetts summer by eating like a local. On a gorgeous summer day, head to one of dozens of pick-your-own farms for the freshest blueberries, raspberries, or apples you can find. Or discover delectable ingredients to craft a homemade meal from one of Massachusetts' local specialty grocers. There are wonderful items to find from across the state. Need some inspiration? Map your fresh food adventure at eatlikealocal in ma.org. Sponsored by Mass Farmers Markets. Understanding the Medicaid process is critically important if you're retired or getting close to retiring. Changes to Medicaid occur almost every year, and if you're not up to speed on the latest information, your assets could be at risk if you or your spouse need nursing home care. Cushing and Dolan can help. Their brand new guide is called Last Minute Medicaid Eligibility. In it, you'll find important information regarding numerous strategies that are available to save your primary home, a vacation home, or any rental property you may own if the nursing home comes calling. You've worked hard to achieve wealth. See that it's protected by getting your copy of this new guide, Last Minute Medicaid Eligibility. Call 866-848-5699. That's 866-848-5699. Or you can request it online right now by visiting LegalExchangeShow.com. That's LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The United States Virgin Islands are America's Caribbean paradise. And right now, you can experience St. Croix with a special promotion called a vibe like no other. Book a minimum five-night stay at participating resorts and receive a $250 air credit per person over the age of 16. A must-see for history buffs. St. Croix's two major cities, Christiansted and Frederickstead, boast much of the island's incredible architecture, as well as incredible beaches, world-class cuisine, and abundance of water sports, plus picturesque golf and casinos to keep you rolling at night. This promotion must include hotel and airfare, and booking must be made by September 1st with travel completed by September 30th. Head to America's Caribbean Paradise and experience a vibe like no other on the island of St. Croix. Go to visitusvi.com backslash vibe and book your trip today. That's visitusvi.com backslash vibe. For 40 years, Cancer Support Community has been a relentless ally for anyone impacted by cancer with free services provided online and in person with their newest location in Massachusetts. Connect with Cancer Support Community Massachusetts for free emotional support, educational resources, patient navigation, financial counseling, and more. 617-797-3391. CancerSupportMass.org. CancerSupportMass.org. For your chance to win our daily trivia contest, text us at 617-362-1385 and use keyword ENCORE. Complete rules are available at FinancialExchangeShow.com. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Joining us now is Ken Johnson. He's the Associate Dean of Graduate Programs at the College of Business at Florida Atlantic University. And I uh, first caught wind of his uh, study that he had done with a few others on the buy versus rent index uh, earlier this year. And joining us now to talk about it is Ken. Ken, thanks for coming on the program. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. So um, I, I don't know how I ran into this, quite honestly, but uh, I found it pretty interesting. You guys compiled data going back to the early 1980s uh, to, to determine, hey, you know, is the market as it looks right now or you know, from the data I see going through 2021 a historically better time to – buy a home or rent a home and i'm curious as to what you looked at and what the different factors are that went into this uh went into this program sure so we've been curious for a decade plus about this buy versus rent decision i do this with ellie braha who's a a co-developer down at fiu um the idea is if we can do all the pros and cons and make a horse race out of out of owning and building equity versus renting and reinvesting other monies into um, a, a portfolio of stocks and bonds, and then see which way those monies that you would have put into housing, which way will actually create more wealth. And interestingly enough, renting and reinvesting wins, but only by a very little bit. In the majority of cases, it wins. But again, the win is small. So hmm. the third option is renting and not reinvesting. And that's what people shouldn't be doing. So the kind of the moral of this is do one of the first two 
But if you do rent, make sure you make that reinvestment. Otherwise, you'd be better off buying on average to and, create wealth. And, and you know, in particular, unsurprisingly, right, if you go take a look at the period of time from 05 or, or even earlier from then to uh, 07, it was dramatically in favor of renting over, uh, over owning at that period of time. What you know, what can you say about today's market? Because I think everybody looks at today's housing market, and there are comparisons that are made to the early two thousands in terms of in terms of pricing, uh, in terms of cost of credit, things like that. What sort of comparisons did you make with today's real estate market to uh, to earlier periods of time that we've seen? Sure. So we we do another index on a pricing premium or discount, which, by the way, are the top one hundred metros around the U.S. Every metro is in a, at least a slight premium. Uh, when we look in the New England area, interestingly enough, there's a slight premium that you're paying, and it's lower than most parts of the country, quite honestly. And then when we look at these price-to-rent ratios, when you're at a historic average, which right now most of New England is actually their price-to-rent ratios are matching where they historically have been. Hmm. So it's pretty much a toss-up between buying and building equity or renting and reinvesting on which way will create more wealth. It's pretty much a toss up. So it, may, it usually makes for a pretty sound housing market. Rents are rising in, in, in the New England area, but only slightly more than the rest of the country. Uh, prices are a little bit more stable. Incomes are, are very supportive of the prices, which is, that's not the case in, in most of the country. So the market looks pretty sound. There's one major threat, I think, that the New England housing market face is going forward, and that's much more out over the horizon, and that's the expect the demographic movements that are going to come sure. about. In the next 10 years, the expected decrease in population in a 200-mile radius uh, of um, Manchester, uh, New, Hampshire, New Hampshire, is going to be roughly 2.5 million people. Of the 28 million people there that you have now in that radius, you'll have 2.5 million people less. That's not going to be good for house prices. When you look nationally, are there any housing markets that look interesting to you in you know, either a very expensive or very uh, cheap comparison to, you know, I know you, you looked at New England for us, which I appreciate, but are there any other housing markets across the country that you look at as, oh, wow, that is very overvalued according to our metrics or very undervalued? So as a general rule, when we look at what we measure when we do price to rent, which is just a derivative of the buy versus rent. Sure. Pricing performance on home prices are weaker in the western half of the United States. The price to rent ratios are very, very high. It's very much like a PE ratio. You're yeah. paying too much for one dollar of annual rent in this particular case. So you see price performance on the eastern half of the US, east of the Mississippi, if you will, where better price to rent ratios are there, much lower getting a better return just on the rent rolls alone. So price performance is more stable in the eastern half of the United States than in the western half. Perhaps the market that I think is maybe the most surprising, maybe I'm a little biased, but I'm here in southeast Florida, and the Florida markets are very interesting at this point in time because unlike the, the New England markets, we, we have some things that are similar, some things quite a bit different. Our premiums are very high. Nine of our measured metros in Florida are in the top 15 in terms of a pricing premium. Mm -hmm. But unlike the New England area, our expected growth rate in the next 10 years is somewhere on the order of 15% in terms of population expansion. Right. So hopefully the increase in population will solve some of the pricing problems we have. But we definitely are in for an affordability issue here in South Florida. Ken, I want to talk about one thing that was, it's pretty nuanced in the study, which is your findings show that pretty much throughout uh, most of the time periods that you measured, that people would in fact be better off by renting and reinvesting those savings from paying rent instead of owning a home and dealing with the maintenance and mortgage and everything like that into an investment portfolio. That's effectively what your study showed. Um, am, I, am I misreading any of that? Is that effectively what, your, you know, what the history of your study was able to show? That, that, that's, ab that's absolutely true. Renting and reinvesting on average is, is, in terms of wealth creation, is beating out buying a home and building equity. So we take out all we on the rental side, we reinvest into a market portfolio, 60-40 mix that has the same volatility as your housing market that we measure. Mm -hmm. We then uh, account for uh, in terms of the buy side, the 
ta taxes, insurance, maintenance, other costs that you would face, cost of sale when you would resell. We look at eight year, 10 year, and I believe it was 15 year windows. The study's a few years old now. So, but consistently renting and reinvesting wins. And the primary reason for that, Mike, is simply because equities and bonds on average, especially equities, have outperformed housing in the last 20 to even 40 years. Uh, the interesting thing, though, is the win is only by a small amount. Yeah. So I encourage people, don't be afraid to buy, but if you do rent, make sure you make that reinvestment. Be monastic about that that discipline to to put that money into that portfolio every month. And that's the piece that I'm sure we all see, which is human behavior doesn't usually work that way. When you've got that, that extra few bucks in your checking account, it uh, it gets pretty tempting. That That's correct. And, and so w when we say that markets are pretty much a toss-up, which we're seeing mostly in the New England area right now, I'm, I'm not surprised that home ownership is still at relatively very, very high levels, simply because you know, there's going to be that temptation to take the vacation. There's going to come these expenses that pop up and you, you, you'll you have to repair the car or do something, uh, make some other investment or spend the money otherwise. So it, it's pretty much a toss up. It does make for a sound market. And again, just coming back to New England, I think the only real problem in the housing market there is over the long term horizon. And that's where the demographic shifts out of New England. Ken Johnson is the Associate Dean of Graduate Programs at the College of Business at FAU and joins us today to talk about the national housing markets and those here in New England as well. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you. All right, time for trivia here on the Financial Exchange, and it's brought to you by Applebee's. Uh, choose from a variety of half-price late-night appetizers after 9 p.m., including half-price boneless buffalo wings, half-price spinach and artichoke dip, and half-price warm pretzels dipped in beer cheese. Gather with friends any day of the week at Applebee's and say hello to half-price appetizers served late night, because half-off is just more fun. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood, void where prohibited, dine-in only. On this date in 2014, uh, Mike's favorite movie that he always references on the show, Guardians of the Galaxy, premiered in... In Hollywood, Chris Pratt was director James Gunn's first choice to play Peter Quill, a.k.a. Star-Lord, but Gunn's second choice for the role is rather interesting. Star-Lord was almost portrayed by an actor from the show It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Question today, which character or the actor's real name was the second choice to play Star-Lord in Guardians of the Galaxy? Once again, which character or which character or the actor's real name was the second choice to play Star-Lord in Guardians of the Galaxy. Kind of a tough one here, so we'll go with the first correct answer to text us at 617-362-1385 with the correct answer. And you win a Financial Exchange Show t-shirt and be registered to win a $100 gift card to Applebee's. Be sure to include the keyword Applebee's in your text and we'll give away that gift card in the next segment, 617-362-1385, and the first correct response will be our winner. See complete contest rules at FinancialExchangeShow.com. I want to talk a little bit about supermarkets, Mike. Please. The first supermarket ever created in the United States was in 1930 by a former Kroger employee. That, that's who ended up creating the idea of this large format store where you can get all your different kinds of groceries under one roof. And ultimately, supermarkets, they, they grew significantly over the course of the 20th century. They went from being 35% of retail food sales in 1950 up to 70% by 1960. And today, they are back down to around 37% uh, of Americans' total food spending. Different places have come in and taken that share. It's been, you know, your... Uh, your Walmarts of the world, like not pure grocers, but, uh, sure. you know, also offering other things. Costco's, BJ's, the likes of those. Exactly. Now you've even got competition in other places, you know, farmers markets, things along those lines are starting to pick mm. up some steam in a number of areas. So, you know, it's this this mix of different things that have cut into that. I, I'm not convinced that this is something that we need to try to change. Like if American shopping preferences shift such that supermarkets are no longer the preferred way to get food. That's fine. Yeah, it, it does call into question the 
plans for companies like Kroger and who owns Shaw's and uh, Star Market. It's another big grocer around here that, that serves those. But yeah, I, I mean, again, people are enjoying the discount retailers that I think of as Aldi and Walmart. They're enjoying the big box retailers uh, and the popularity of the traditional grocery store is diminishing. I think Albertsons actually purchased uh, Star and Shaw's. Albertsons did? Yeah, they might have. Yeah, and then you got Hannaford and Stop and Shop that are owned by the uh, Del Hayes guys. The problem for these companies, by the way, I mean, if anyone's not familiar, the profit margins on grocery. Low single digits. Very, very small. The, so if, if your you know growth projections aren't hitting, and if, if you have more competition, yeah, there's not a whole lot of room to squeeze. Yeah, the economics behind a grocery store are you spend 20 to $30 million to build it, and you hope to make that back over a 20-year period. It's, it's tough business. Let's take a quick break here. When we come back, we've got the trivia answer, and then talking Amazon. The Financial Exchange is live on Facebook, so make sure to like our page and watch the guys break down the latest on the markets every day beginning at 10 on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. AM Radio provides always on news, sports, talk, traffic, and weather reports. And it's also a vital service that provides important emergency information when your community needs it most. Tell Congress you need AM Radio to stay in your car. Because when cell phones and the internet are down, this free emergency service is critical. Text AM to 52886 and tell Congress we need AM Radio in cars. Message and data rates may apply. You may receive up to four messages a month, and you may text stop to stop. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. Hi, this is Chuck Zada from the Armstrong Advisory Group. With inflation continuing to disrupt financial markets, it may be time to rethink your retirement savings and investment strategy. Inflation makes it harder to plan for both the short and long term. With costs of necessary goods and services remaining high, inflation shrinks the spending power of the money in your wallet and in your retirement plan, but there are ways to mitigate its impact. Our new guide is called Inflation, Interest Rates, and Your Retirement, and in it, we'll discuss how you may be able to plan for inflation and limit the strain on your retirement savings. Call us at 800-393-4001 and ask for your free guide today. That's 800-393-4001, or you can request the guide online at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. The United States Virgin Islands are America's Caribbean paradise. And right now, you can experience St. Croix with a special promotion called a vibe like no other. Book a minimum five-night stay at participating resorts and receive a $250 air credit per person over the age of 16. A must-see for history buffs. St. Croix's two major cities, Christiansted and Frederickstead, boast much of the island's incredible architecture, as well as incredible beaches, world-class cuisine, and abundance of water sports, plus picturesque golf and casinos to keep you rolling at night. This promotion must include hotel and airfare, and booking must be made by September 1st with travel completed by September 30th. Head to America's Caribbean Paradise and experience a vibe like no other on the island of St. Croix. Go to visitusvi.com backslash vibe and book your trip today. That's visitusvi.com backslash vibe. This is Tucker Silva of the Financial Exchange, and I'm joined today by estate planning attorney Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing & Dolan with your Financial Exchange quick tip of the day. And today we're talking about techniques that can help protect your assets from long-term care expenses last minute. Todd, is the healthy spouse allowed to keep anything when the sick spouse enters a nursing home? And what happens if the sick spouse has the majority of the income? So, couple of things. Let's distinguish between assets and income. When I'm talking about assets for now, I'm just talking about monetary assets for this purpose. They are allowed to look at all the money and give $148,000 approximately 
to the healthy spouse. That's the maximum amount of assets the healthy spouse is allowed to have from a monetary standpoint. The sick spouse is allowed to have a maximum of $2,000 of assets, again, from the monetary standpoint. Now, income is a different story. With regard to income, the healthy spouse is allowed to have as much income as he or she could possibly make. Doesn't matter. However, the healthy spouse is also required to have what they call a minimum monthly maintenance needs allowance of at least approximately $2,500. So all the other income after that that the sick spouse has does need to go to the nursing home. So a difference between income and asset limits, folks. Todd Lutzke and the estate planning experts at Cushing and Dolan have written a brand new guide that details last minute Medicaid eligibility. You can request this brand new guide by calling 866-848-5699. Or if you prefer, you can go to their website, legalexchangeshow.com and request it there. Once again, 866-848-5699 or you can request it from their website legalexchangeshow.com The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Miss any of the show? You can catch up at your convenience by visiting FinancialExchangeShow.com and clicking the on-demand icon where you'll find all of our interviews and full shows. This is your home for the latest business and financial news in New England and around the country. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Which character, which character, I don't know why I can't say the word today. Which character are the actors real, actors real, <laughs> Oh, God, it's Friday, yeah. What? I said, get Ben in here. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, which character or actor's real name was second choice to play Star-Lord in Guardians of the Galaxy? Well, that would be Dennis from Always mm. in Se- Sunny in Philadelphia. Real name is Glenn Howardin. Glenn Howardin uh, was director James Gunn's second choice to play Star-Lord. Other famous actors who auditioned for the role were John Krasinski, Aaron Paul, James Marston, and Joel Egerton. I don't know who that is. Uh, two winners to give out today. Winner of the Financial Exchange Show t-shirt was John from Randolph. And the weekly winner for the Applebee's $100 gift card was Raphael from Springfield. So congrats to both winners today. And trivia is brought to you by Applebee's. Choose from a variety of half-price late-night appetizers after 9 p.m. Because half-off is just more fun. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Void where prohibited. Dine-in only. Mike, when's the last time you went to a Whole Foods? I haven't been to one in years. Yeah, actually, it's been a very long time. So, a while. Um, I only because Wegmans is far superior. So, Sorry to all the Whole Foods fans out there. Just, I actually I love have, Wegmans. I have different feelings on Wegmans these days. Really? Uh, I don't have any Wegmans near me. So. I think Wegmans is fantastic for prepared foods. Mm-hmm. I think their cheese area is a place that Second I could spend none. easily $500,000 in a day. Yep. Easily. You know, and just eat my way through there. Uh, I think Wegmans produce is very mediocre. I just disagree. I find their produce to be very mediocre, and I find that the selection of other just, like, normal groceries is fine, but nothing extraordinary. Really? So I, I think I, you walk in, you see that whole, like, prepare foods area, and, like, the meat section looks pretty good and this and that, and the rest of it I just find kind of underwhelming, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, I... I, I Maybe we're shopping for different things, but yeah, for me, the cheese... The cheese is the best that I've seen anywhere. The meat section as well, so uh, you know, the, the... Even the meats are... Different meat. cuts, and the fact that they have a dry aging section in every Wegmans I've been into. Uh, yeah, so does Whole Foods. Yeah, right, but it, Whole Foods is like one-fifth the size of a Wegmans. Um, and more expensive, right? And more expensive, it's not and that bad. no bulk items. It's not that bad. So, yeah, I'll take Wegmans every day of the week. Anyways... Amazon is announcing that they are going to be rolling out their Amazon One Palm Recognition System to all of their 500-plus Whole Foods stores by the end of the year. About time. Thank God. Do you know how frustrated I have been (laughs) with having to turn my (laughs) wrist to scan my Apple Watch, which I don't actually have here, or take out my card with the NFC reader and just lightly tap it against that thing before I check out? I, I don't understand people who talk about this like, oh, like we're, we're innovating in payments. No, all you're doing is making it so that like 
I just have to hold my hand somewhere instead of hold something in my hand. That's somewhere. no better. <laughs> it's the, so you know what would be great is if you actually got to the point where it was like you were talking about. Hey, just pick stuff up, put it in your cart, and walk out so you don't have to wait and check out. They have that. That's not in not all in of Whole them. Foods. Not in all of them, but it's in, in like any a, Whole Foods. I think it's in like a. It's in the Amazon fresh stores There's in like a handful of them. Still uh, right. perfecting the technology, but yeah. so this to me, this also doesn't get you closer to that. So no, what's the th- point of this? This is dumb, in yeah, my opinion. It's really dumb. And, and furthermore, payment processing is not a problem today. We're not paying with cash and check anymore. What? Why do I need to give you my palm print in order to to pay for my groceries? I don't know how it recognizes your palm. Well, here's another thing. Three years ago, I had a little bit of a hedge trimmer accident. Oh, boy. Cut a couple fingers, needed some stitches. Mm. It's fine, but I got these scars on my fingers that are fairly That's usually meaningful. From what I understand, I scars. from... <laughs> What's that? So you want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> From what I understand of how they use this stuff, um, because I remember learning about this, I think during my times at a previous firm that was really interested in technology and, and security, they're actually reading the veins underneath your palm. They're not looking at the fingerprints or anything like that. So here's the stupid thing. If That's how they tell that you know they didn't just. So what if my accident was worse, and then I just I can't pay for my groceries? Yeah, yeah, I guess not. So, in order to register, <laughs> hey, oh, sorry. In order to You've re- got no palm to sign up for this technology, there are two methods to go about it. I sent you guys this video. It's like an, a minute forty-five, and the guy's very happy doing it. Very annoying. Uh, the first one is to scan it by inserting your credit card, like you would any other time you go to the store. Then you punch in your phone number. Then it accepts your credit card, and then you scan your palm. That's a one-time thing. The other and way to do it is you go up to a kiosk at the front of the store and go through that same process one time. But still, is it really that inconvenient? And one more piece on this. Furthermore, uh, the problem at it, checkout is not putting your credit card no, in the reader. No, it's easy. And what are we doing? It saves okay, 10 seconds? Beyond all this, even if it were a huge time saver. Okay, so we uh, – anybody not familiar – probably not – have you heard, Tucker, of, I know Chuck's heard of it, but um, Move It is a technology source. You haven't? No. Move IT? No. Okay. So uh, Move It is the latest hack of the week that we uh, maybe uh, haven't covered yet. I it thought is, that was what like, Tybo turned into or something. In late May, a Russian ransomware gang uh, exploited a security hole in the software Move It uh, product suite to steal documents from vulnerable networks. It has impacted so far 400 uh, different institutions, uh, some 20 million plus individuals, including uh, U.S. Department of Energy, uh, energy company Shell, Deutsche Bank, PwC, Jackson Insurance Company, TD Ameritrade, uh, hundreds of organizations. I had somebody that talked to me yesterday about how the New York City uh, pension system was hacked by all this. So they've got you know a lot of information. Do you also want that organization to have a scan of your palm? No. Like I, I, I might have all the confidence in the world of Amazon not getting hacked, but I don't need another piece of my data out there to be stolen. Yeah, but what's somebody going to do with your palm? Like buy groceries? I don't know. Yeah, I, I have no idea what they're going to do. Like, with it, but I, I don't I want anybody to have it. I can't change my palm. What if somebody wants to chop off my hand to go grocery shopping? <laughs> Well, that's where the veins come in that I was talking to you about. That's actually uh, why they do that. Is uh, so you don't get your hand chopped off. Yes, speaking of which, off. they weren't using this for groceries in the you know company that I was looking at. It was much higher security type stuff. But uh, yeah, that was the whole idea. Is if they're scanning the veins underneath your palm, then you know they're going to detect whether or not it's attached to your body. <laughs> Just well, wave the hand to the cashier. This has been a gruesome show for me. I was <laughs> talking about decapitation earlier, and now we're talking about chopping off hands. I'm what? sorry, everybody. What is a uh, I had a rough Thursday? I guess. Friday. What, what, I know. What what is a Russian ransomware gang dress like? Exactly the way you think. Black trench coats. That's not exactly the no? way I would think. Uh, that's no, how I was thinking about it. No, I, I, I it, was, it was an honest question. I mean, yeah. is there you know uh, probably uh, camouflage there, of it, some sort? Is there a garb that you wear? Do you have to? Are are there gang colors for it? I don't know. Series of good questions, Chuck. I just I'm I'm curious. Uh, I but want- yeah, if you're not familiar with this, just know that your financial institution is very likely to contact you soon because hundreds of organizations have been hit by this latest uh, hack. Did you know the royal family is getting a raise next year? 
About time. They're actually getting a pay cut in terms of the percentage of profits they get from assets that they supposedly hold, even though it's paid out by the British government to them, which is a whole thing. But the monarchy could receive 124 million pounds. About time, like I said. I despise this. <laughs> oh, they work hard, you know? I'm sorry, but, like, so the British government is going to give you a, quote, sovereign grant of $125 million just because you're the son of someone else who was the daughter of someone else who... No, they deserve it, you know? What have you ever done in your life? I, like, well, you were born. Wave like I, this. I, I'm, I'm just... I'm sorry I'm not sorry, but I just find the idea of sovereigns in today's day and age ridiculous. Mm. If, if I were a British citizen, this would bother me to no end that $125 million pounds, pounds. More dollars. are being paid to... What? A, a, a figurehead that has otherwise no claim to... Any, like, reasonable whatever on this planet? Yes. It's just bothersome to me. It, it just, I, 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 I can't, I, I can't wrap my head around it. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to be joined by, by Paul and Monica. I, I like Paul a lot better than the royal family, so we're going to talk to Paul when we return on the financial exchange. If you missed any of today's show, catch up whenever you want on our YouTube page. Find daily show segments and full shows. Just go to YouTube.com and search for The Financial Exchange. This is your home for breaking business and financial news. This is The Financial Exchange Radio Network. Understanding the Medicaid process is critically important if you're retired or getting close to retiring. Changes to Medicaid occur almost every year, and if you're not up to speed on the latest information, your assets could be at risk if you or your spouse need nursing home care. Cushing and Dolan can help. Their brand new guide is called Last Minute Medicaid Eligibility. In it, you'll find important information regarding numerous strategies that are available to save your primary home, a vacation home, or any rental property you may own if the nursing home comes calling. You've worked hard to achieve wealth. See that it's protected by getting your copy of this new guide, Last Minute Medicaid Eligibility. Call 866-848-5699. That's 866-848-5699. Or you can request it online right now by visiting LegalExchangeShow.com. That's LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Environmental nonprofit Ocean River Institute is working with communities to tackle climate change with nature-based solutions that feature slowing water down and building more soil with grasses and plants. Research indicates that people acting in their own neighborhoods can build an inch of soil in a year and slow sea level rise down by as much as 25%. Please visit OceanRiver.org for more information on opportunities to make a difference and go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greener and bluer planet Earth. The United States Virgin Islands are America's Caribbean paradise. And right now, you can experience St. Croix with a special promotion called a vibe like no other. Book a minimum five-night stay at participating resorts and receive a $250 air credit per person over the age of 16. A must-see for history buffs. St. Croix's two major cities, Christiansted and Frederickstead, boast much of the island's incredible architecture, as well as incredible beaches, world-class cuisine, and abundance of water sports, plus picturesque golf and casinos to keep you rolling at night. This promotion must include hotel and airfare, and booking must be made by September 1st with travel completed by September 30th. Head to America's Caribbean Paradise and experience a vibe like no other on the island of St. Croix. Go to visitusvi.com backslash vibe and book your trip today. That's visitusvi.com backslash vibe. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. 
Hi, this is Mike Armstrong from the Armstrong Advisory Group. Inflation poses a threat to your retirement goals because it reduces the value of your hard-earned savings. With the costs of necessary goods and services rising as quickly as they have in more than 40 years, it's time for you to consider how high inflation affects your retirement planning. We've written a new guide called Inflation, Interest Rates, and Your Retirement. And in it, we discuss why it's important to incorporate inflation into your retirement savings and investment strategy. Don't let inflation chip away at your net. Day. Call us at 800 393 4001 and ask for your free guide today. Or you can request the guide online at armstrongadvisory.com or set up an appointment to meet with one of our advisors by clicking the Get Started button on the homepage. That's armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Business and financial news affecting the markets and your wallet. We've got it all straight from Wall Street, right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, the weekend. The Financial Exchange is proudly partnered with VA New England. If you or loved ones serve this country, get the health benefits you earned and deserve. Call 844 VA Cares. That's 844 VA Cares. Joining us now on the line is Paul LaMonica, and we're talking Carvana with Paul today. Paul, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Uh, what, what a, we've got we've got Paul kind of in and out. Tucker, the can stock we stock and year for that matter? Oh, Paul, you, are you there? We lost you for a second. Paul's yeah, kind of... I'm here. I'm hearing you fine. Can you hear me? I'm hearing it's you fine. It's a little yes. delayed. Yeah. Okay, we got you. I'm going to move. All right, I'm going to move and see if – is that better? Yes. Let's let's talk a little bit about Carvana. So the, the, the shares of Carvana are up almost 1,000% this year. Uh, they were up 35% just on Wednesday. Is there an actual turnaround happening, or are we getting Mimi again? I, I think we're getting a bit Mimi. I mean, obviously it is good news that they are cutting debt this agreement with uh, bondholders that Apollo helped uh, broker, you know, will reduce their debt load by about $1.2 billion. And uh, Carvana had about $6.5 billion in debt on its balance sheet most recently uh, at the end of the second quarter. So it is good that they are going to be making a move to delever a little bit. But the fundamentals are still challenged. Uh, You know, revenue is expected to decline. Line. They're still losing me. You know, this isn't to say that, you know, Carvana is necessarily a screaming short because that's, I think, dangerous with any meme stock that has uh, a fanatic following. But a thousand percent just this year for a company that not that long ago was on the bankruptcy watch list seems a bit speculative to me. How is it that, not just with Carvana, we've seen rebounds in a a number of different meme stocks this year and and speculative ones that, you know, had kind of been left for dead after 2022. What what do you make of all this? Because it's not just Carvana. No, it isn't. I think that what is happening to a certain extent is that investors are making this bet that, we are at peak interest rates after maybe next week. The Fed is likely to raise rates one more time. And then the hope is that maybe they will pause for good, start cutting rates, if not necessarily this year, but into 2024. And I think that is something that should lead to a rebound in earnings. But I think uh, investors looking at some of these meme stocks are, really just making the calculated gamble that, you know, in an environment where earnings growth this year is still sluggish, you want to have a little bit more excitement than uh, even with, uh, you know, the the fangs that have had a a very, very good year. Tech stocks have rebounded pretty sharply. Investors are just looking for higher momentum, higher returns, but obviously a lot higher risk as well. Very good. Paul, appreciate you joining us today. Thanks so much for the time, and have a great weekend. Thanks, guys.
That is Paula Monica talking about Carvana. The United States Virgin Islands are America's Caribbean paradise, and right now you can experience St. Croix in a special promotion that's a vibe like no other. Book a minimum five-night stay at participating resorts and receive a $250 air credit per person over the age of 16. A must-see for history buffs, St. Croix's two major cities, Christianstead and Frederickstead, boast much of the island's incredible architecture, as well as amazing beaches, world-class cuisine, and abundance of water sports, plus picturesque golf and casinos to keep you rolling at night. This promotion must include hotel and airfare, and booking must be made by September 1st, with travel completed by September 30th. Head to America's Caribbean Paradise and experience a vibe like no other on the island of St. Croix. Go to visitusvi.com backslash vibe and book your trip today. That's visitusvi.com backslash vibe. I don't mean to... um... I agree the ridiculousness of Carvana being up a thousand percent, but I think some context is helpful there because it's up a thousand percent to forty five dollars ish per share today. Back in August of twenty one, it was trading over three hundred sixty dollars a share. So it's still not good. Yeah. Compa- if if you bought in August of twenty one, yeah, you're, you're still, still not down feeling great. Eighty five plus percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just contextualizing that stuff. The meme craze of twenty twenty one was. Uniquely a special moment. It, it was uniquely stupid. Yeah, yeah. And we've gotten a little bit of a stupid echo, which is we you have. know we, we have. It's it's still just an echo though. Again, not to say Carvana doesn't have a business model. Well, no, they do. It's losing money. Yeah, it's it's a bad business model. It's <laughs> it's not profitable. It's, see, unlike Tesla and Netflix yesterday, where we can say, hey, they were down, you know, eight and ten percent, but ultimately they're still profitable companies that are sure. making money and, and yada yada. Every time Carvana expands, they seem to lose money. Carvana money. is losing money hand over fist. The, the, it's, it's a bad business model. Yeah. It, it's not a good one. Which makes me want to buy a car from them. Does it? Because yeah, I, I don't it know that you necessarily save money on the car. It, it's not, the, their model is not we sell it to you cheaper. The other thing I've actually heard from a lot of, the, uh, a lot of people in the business is that uh, some of the things... As far as the uh, accident checks and things like that? Not so good. Not necessarily the best there. Mm. So that makes you not want to buy one for Right. There. So there's that. What else you got for me? Um, Elon Musk, once again promising that we are just right around the corner uh, from self-driving car technology. Uh, he was quoted on the most recent earnings call. At least now he's starting to acknowledge it. Quote, I know I'm the boy who cried fsd full self-driving but man i think we'll be better than human by the end of this year i I have now moved i've talked about this over the last year or two i've now moved Uh, into the camp that we're never for mass market vehicles getting to full self-driving that can just take you anywhere yeah i think it's very much if you let's say that you have you're a trucking company and you have a truck that does a route from manchester new hampshire to boston between two facilities I think you could have it for that. Yeah. On a predefined route. Yeah. I don't think you can have it where you just get in your car and it's going to take you wherever you want self-drivingly. Honestly, if I can get to the point in the next decade where when I drive once or twice a year from Boston to Chicago that I can plug in on I-90 and... Mike, you can. It's called a train. Zone out. It's called a train. Yeah, I know, but then i got to pay tickets for my four other family members. I want to drive. Then I will feel... It's called a train. Do you know how long it takes to get to Chicago via train? Probably about the same as driving. 26 hours. Longer than driving. A <laughs> lot longer. You can enjoy Ridiculous. the beautiful scenery of western Pennsylvania. Yeah. Pittsburgh's actually very nice in the summer. I usually go around Christmas. It's not so nice then. Let's take a quick break for the whole weekend. And when we come back on Monday, we'll have a whole new week, including Fed meeting next week. You know, nope, Fed meeting the following. Nope, it is next, next week. week. It is this week. You yeah. got it. Next week. We'll see you on Monday. The United States Virgin Islands are America's Caribbean paradise.